from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father John Berteo. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Father Cornelius Luce from Estevan, Saskatchewan. This Mass is offered for, the, for his personal intentions and for the living and deceased members of his family in Canada, the United States of America, and Ireland. We know that this, televised, that this television Mass brings meaning to lives of tens of thousands of people across Canada, our land, and around the world. And they join me in thanking Father Cornelius Luce for this gift. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist in asking our dear Lord for his forgiveness, pardon, and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, mortal, Prophecy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophecy and say to them, to the shepherds, Thus says the Lord God, Ah, you shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat. You clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak. You have not healed the sick. You have not bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strayed. You have not sought the lost. But with force and harshness, you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep were scattered. They wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth with no one to search or seek for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord God, because my sheep have become a prey and my sheep have become food for all the wild animals, since there was no shepherd. And because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep, but the shepherds have fed themselves and have not fed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, I am against the shepherds, and I will demand my sheep at their hand and put a stop to their feeding the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths so that they may not be food for them. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you also go into my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same and about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around and he said to them, why are you standing here all day idle? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual wage. Now, when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these have worked only one hour, and you have, you have them, you gave them equal pay to us to have them borne the burden of the sun all day in the scorching heat. 
but he replied to one of them, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My first job as a teenager was to work in a fancy restaurant in downtown Toronto washing glasses. I noticed how hard the service worked to please the customers and, of course, get a good tip. I also noticed at the end of the shift that they would get together to divide the, the tips amongst themselves as well as the bartender, but not me. I felt sometimes left out. Indeed, these servers worked very hard at their job, but so did I, making sure that the glasses were nice and shiny and clean. But I guess because of my age, as I was not old enough to drink, I could not join their club, so I was a bit left out. In our lifetimes, many of us work very hard to make ends meet, and many times we even work a bit harder and more hours to perhaps get a raise or a promotion. What about gaining favor with God? Today's gospel reveals to us that God's grace is available to everyone just for the asking. Today's parable, then, is not about salaries and wages or even union contracts. It's about the remarkable generosity of our God. According to a reflection by Father Joseph Krampa, Matthew probably includes this parable because of the local conflict between the Jewish Christians, those who had entered the church at the beginning, and the increasing number of new converts to the Christian faith. Jesus' words that the last to come are as important as the first to arrive, thus a lesson to all of us and the church leaders that all people are invited to drink deeply from the living waters of salvation. Stop and think about it. Some of you, I'm sure, have heard about or participated in what we call the RCIA, the Rite of Catholic Initiation for Catholics. How wonderful it is to see continued new people coming to the Catholic faith. In reading this parable, we learned that closeness to the kingdom, our holiness is not determined how long we have been Catholic. Closeness to the kingdom is determined by how responsive we are to the Lord's call. The point of the parable is not how long the laborers worked, but that they answered the call. Finally, when it comes to unity with God, there is no competition. Let us always be thankful for God's remarkable generosity and pray for unity and peace in his name. May God bless you all. Please join me in prayer as we pray for all men and women who labor in unjust circumstances. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those who are unemployed, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those who labor so others might have the necessary resources for life, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those who are alone and lonely, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those who have been diagnosed or are struggling with a serious illness, 
we pray to the Lord. For the sponsor of this televised daily Mass, Father Cornelius in Estevan, Saskatchewan, and his personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. For all of those in the daily TV Mass community who are asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially for families, for peace in times of blessing and of difficulty, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear and in praise of our Blessed Mother, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these petitions that we have verbalized and those in the silence of our hearts that we offer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for with you as we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for with you in us we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, with spirit of God. By you, Lord, may I sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of his For the purpose of the church. Lord our God, who once established these sacred things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make all these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, our Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with this Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity of Pilgrim Church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you and their passing from this, from this life. They give kind of ministry your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth from this Mass in the peace of Christ. Thanks. God bless you. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details.